you worship. One God. We continue to record these khutbahs because they are very important. Now I know what I'm going to talk about. About, uh, in fact, exactly 19 years ago, I started the research on the Quran. I put it in the computer. And you know the rest of the story. Now after that, there was tremendous publicity for the miracle of the Quran. We had not reached the, the conclusion that is causing all kinds of problems for the disbelievers that we shall worship God alone, that we shall devote ourselves to Allah alone, and that we must uphold the Quran, the whole Quran, and nothing but Quran. Until this conclusion appeared about 1976, there was tremendous publicity for the miracle of Quran and the putting the Quran in the computer. And it was a very popular issue. The leaflet was distributed by the millions throughout the Muslim world and was translated to all languages of the world, French and Japanese. And, and the biblical scholars apparently became jealous and they wanted to do the same thing. So they did organize a very uh, Uh, sanctioned study at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, a fellow by the name of uh, Katz, uh, put the Bible in the computer, the Torah, the five books of Moses, I guess. And what we did was to uh, first, let's say, uh, I'm going to put the English, but they used the original to them, what, what or the oldest text they can get hold of. In the beginning, you know, this is how uh, the book of Genesis begins. What they did was take, uh, take every second letter. I think they started with every seventh letter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they took every seventh letter, put all these letters together, and tried to get meaningful words or sentences out of them. That didn't work. So they took every eighth letter. And that didn't work. And they kept going on until they got to some number and they found the word Torah. And they became very excited. And they said, God is saying that this is the Torah and so on. They found words like uh, Elohim, Jerusalem, Holocaust. But these words were formed from the letters that they extracted from the text, the original text of the Bible. Last night, Larry King had a professor at the University of California, San Diego. His name was Richard, Richard Elliot Freeman. His book is now in the, in the market and they're making a big noise about it. The book is entitled, Who Wrote the Bible? And in the question and answer by telephone, somebody asked him if he's familiar with the computer work that was done in Israel. and. Uh, I'm going to let you hear the answer. Then I will comment from there on. Years that supposedly prove that the Bible uh, is all by God or all by one creator. 
so and then finally on a certain, I think it was every 17th letter, it came out every now and then spelling the word. As it happens, the word they got was Torah. Three of the four letters of Torah are the three most common letters in the Hebrew language. And so they said, statistically, my God, how could this have happened that it keeps out spelling uh, Torah? It is nonsense. You can do this with any book, the same process. You count every 14th letter of the Bible and it'll spell out Paul McCartney is dead. Okay. This is true. I mean, as you see now, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you on this hope is that we have the real thing. These people tried, they put the Bible in the computer, and they tried all kinds of things. Now they're taking every seventh letter, every eighth letter, and so on. In the Quran, the discovery that came out of this mosque, we have no choice. We cannot manipulate the data. We have two verses initial with the letter Q. We didn't choose Q. The author of the Quran, Almighty Allah, chose Q. And there are two chapters initialed with Q. One is chapter 42, the other chapter 50. You count the letter Q, which is dictated on us. We did not choose it. <coughs> In chapter 42, and you have 57 Qs. 19 times 3. You count the letter Q in chapter 50, which is half as long as 42, and you also get the same number, 57, which is 19 times 3. There is uh, one chapter initialed with the letter N. We didn't choose the letter N. There is no chance of manipulating or uh, haphazardly looking for anything. <coughs> and you count the letters in this chapter, the letter N in this chapter, and you have 133. 19 times 7. There are three chapters initialed with the letter S, the, the heavy S, a guttural S, Saad. And you count this letter. There is no question about the letter. Q or N or S, they're very clear letters. And in the chapters initiated with S, you count this letter, and you find 152 S's, which is 19 times A. There is, there is no manipulation here. We have the real thing. We have proof that every letter in Quran, every word, was mathematically composed beyond human intelligence. This is a supernatural composition. I wanted initially to give you a report on my, on my visit to San Diego. We had a, a very nice meeting last Saturday. And I find out that uh, Abba May's aunt and, and uh, uncle were, were there. I presented to them, we discussed with them the miracle of Quran, and there was one person an objector who came from uh, some some other camp and uh, I pointed out these things to him that we have no chance of manipulating the Quran because we did not choose the Q or the S or the N and I asked, I asked him to explain how come all these are consistently multiples of 19 we have seven chapters initial to HM seven chapters and you count these initials in the seven chapters and you have 2,147 or 19 times 113. 2,147. These seven chapters are almost one-tenth of the Quran. And if you have one extra H or one extra M, this will, would not be a multiple of 19. It's an extremely sensitive mathematical composition. ALM in, in, in chapter 2, 9,899 of them. You count the letter A, the letter M, the letter, the letter L, and the letter M, and the total is 9,899. We did not choose ALM. Like they skipped every seventh letter, every eighth letter, and then they took the letters out and tried to make words out of them. Like Dr. Freeman said, you can do it with any book. 
Some of the critics say you can do this with any book, but it's not true. I tell them, fine. They said you can do it with any number, not necessarily 19. I say, please, let us see some other numbers. You know, we'd like to see a miraculous composition of the Quran using any number. And they, they haven't shown us any, anything yet. 19 years until now. And we challenge them to prove any mistake here. There isn't any. Notice this is 9899. It sounds like the price of a used car. 9899.99 cents. <laughs> but this is a multiple of 19. 19 times 5, 2, 1. One A, one letter A, if it's added or lost, becomes 9898, and that will not be a multiple of 19. If you add one L or one M in chapter 2, a huge chapter, just one letter, lost or added, then you have 9900, which is a nice round number, but it's not a multiple of 19. We have a chapter initiated with K, H, Y, A, A, S, the heavy S. This happens to be chapter 19, and it has to do with the story of Mary and Jesus, the virgin birth, the miracles of Jesus, things that are normally unbelievable. And this is why God is strengthening this chapter with five initials. And you count them. These are distinct letters that I have in the book, the visual presentation book, with every, every one of these letters marked with a star so they can see for themselves. I mean, you are feeding them the miracle with a spoon. The, the first book was just tables and numbers, and they said, how do we know you're not lying? How do we know these numbers are correct? So I printed the, the second book, for them, with every letter, I say, all you need to do is show me one letter without a star, one of these letters without a star, or show me a star under a letter that is not one of these. There are 798 of these. This is 19 times 42. Consistently, every single one of them, without exception, 29 chapters initially. And we have no choice. These K, H, Y, A, S have been in the Quran for 1400 years. There is no chance for manipulating or playing around. And after the conclusion came that we shall worship God alone and uphold the Quran alone, you know how popular I am. They are dying to find a mistake. It's a blessing from God that I'm not that popular. Just received a death threat the other day. Somebody said the Saudis are going to assassinate you. Only three days ago. That's how popular I am. So you can imagine how eager they are to find mistakes. And you can't be sure if they find one mistake, because one mistake means the whole thing collapses. And this is what I'm telling them. I said, I'll forget the whole thing if we find one mistake, because God is perfect. And His system is perfect. There are other initials, ALMR, ALMS, ALR, TSM, TS, YS, YS is a surah entitled YS, surah number 36. You count the Y and the S in this chapter, there are 285. 19 times 15. Strange things happen in the Quran. There is a letter, yeah, this letter is questionable in many, many surahs. There are many words. Like, for example, Yatawafaku is written with a yeah in the word that is obscure, yeah. It's kind of a questionable yeah. You do not find a single questionable word in this surah. They're all the straightforward yeah. Yeah, seen. 285. I don't know what other letters I forgot, but every single one in their chapters is a multiple of 19. 
No wonder God calls this one of the greatest miracles. And we are the lucky generation that witnesses this miracle. The consequences of this miracle certainly are fantastic. And they have evolved to the ultimate conclusion that, uh, that I've been telling you about. God is doing everything. This is the ultimate conclusion. This ultimate conclusion explains why the majority of believers are going to hell. Because there are lots of people who believe in God, but they don't believe that He's doing everything. It's a very crucial conclusion, the ultimate conclusion. The one that leads us to heaven. And you can understand why it is rare that people, people go to heaven, the people who are going to heaven are rare. And we find this in the Bible consistently, in the Bible in the Quran. <clears throat> Narrow, straightened is the road to heaven. Wide and spacious is the road to hell, says the Bible. The Quran says the same thing. Tubu ilallah. Repent. Praise be to God, I bear witness that there is no God except the one God who is doing everything. God is doing everything. And some people added a few things. Lisa, the other day was telling me she added, and I wholeheartedly submit to him. Next, uh, another complete sentence. God is doing everything and I wholeheartedly submit to Him. Because this ultimate conclusion that God is doing everything sheds a whole new light on the idea of submission to God. Because from now on you will not be an objector, you will not be unhappy with anything. If you are unhappy with anything, you are an objector. If there is anything that causes unhappiness, you have to find out what it is and eliminate it. Look for the non-Quranic situations in your life. Eliminate them. You must live, you must be sure that everything in your life is Quranic. Quranic means the word of God. In the meeting in San Diego, the one fellow over there, the objecting fellow, was saying that uh, out of this research came the, uh, the dating for the end of the world. In the first book, The Computer Speaks, as you remember, I said that uh, the end of the world, God says that the end of the world is 2280 AD. Or 1710 AH. Both of them multiples of 19. Okay, he said that this is a very dangerous thing to say. Now why is it dangerous? Whether it is correct or, or wrong, why is it dangerous? First of all, we're not going to live until that time. Second of all, if it is wrong, I mean, what is, I mean, why is it? It's a piece of information. I must mention here that uh, the three minimum requirements in the Quran, in Surah 2 verse 62, and also the same thing is repeated in Surah 5, it says the minimum requirements are believe in God, believe in the hereafter, lead a righteous life. These are the three minimum requirements. You make it to heaven if you believe in God alone. Believe in the hereafter and lead a righteous life. There's nothing about Moses and Jesus and Muhammad. You don't have to believe in them. There's nothing about the Quran or the Bible or the Gospel. You don't have to believe in them. There is nothing in there about anything. There's nothing about the angels. You believe in the angels? Of course you believe in the angels. But it is not a requirement. It's a piece of information. It's an additional piece of information. There's a difference between the knowledgeable person and an ignorant person. And all of them, if they satisfy these three requirements, they make it to heaven. But to believe in the angels, the, the messengers, the scriptures, 
All these are additional pieces of information, valuable pieces of information. And one of the valuable pieces of information is that God put in the Quran the end of the world. So I'm going, this khutbah will be devoted to this. First of all, the Quran is God's final message to the world. God is the only one who knows when the world will end. And God wants to tell the world about the end of the world and when it will be. And God put it in the, in the final message to the world. So uh, it is not me who is saying or predicting the end of the world. It is the all knowledgeable God Almighty that is saying in the Quran when it will end. And it goes like this. In Surah 20 verse 15, God says, I will not keep the end of the world hidden. And in Surah 15, God says, we have given you, O Muhammad, the seven pairs. The seven pairs. Fourteen. And the letters that I showed you in the first khutbah are fourteen. Fourteen sets. So they are, as you see, a fantastic miracle. And God is telling Muhammad what a blessing it was that God gave him these seven pairs. Now, when the Quran was revealed, there were no numbers. This ALM, the first verse of Surah 2, for example, you can look on them as letters, and you can also look on them as numbers. This is 71. This was 71 at the time of revelation of the Quran. We did not have these numbers when the Quran was revealed. A is 1, L is 30, M is 40. 1, 30, 40, the total is 71. You add the 14 sets of numbers and they give you 1709 total. So we have given you, O Muhammad, the verse, when you look at it carefully in view of all the Quran, <coughs> that from Muhammad to the end of the world, or from the Quran to the end of the world, 1709 years. After you complete 1,709 years, you go into 1,710. After Israel, which is a multiple of 19, there is one flag goes up, a sign, a confirmation. The corresponding year, AD, is 2280, which is also a multiple of 19. Another flag goes up. This discovery happened in the year 1400. And it said that the end of the world will be 1709. I mean, the, the total number of the letters was 1709. So how many years are left? How many complete years? Because 1710 will not be complete. Before the end of 1710, the world will end. 309. And immediately a flag goes up. We find in Surah 18, the people of the cave, God didn't tell us how many there are in the cave. And, and God goes out of his way to tell us, I'm not going to tell you how many there are in the cave. Three, and people say four. Five, and people say six. Or seven, and people say their eight is a dog. Say, God knows how many there are. So I'm not going to tell you how many, but he tells us how long they lasted in the cave. Three hundred increased by nine. Why? This is a Quranic number. And, uh, and uh, you, you look in the Surah, and it tells you why God says, told us about the field of the cave. It says, to remove all doubt about the end of the world. I'm going to say it in Arabic, and the translation in English. I mean, what is more straightforward than that? It says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِعَلَمُوا أَنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا That the end of the world, there is no doubt about it. In other words, so this, to remove all doubt concerning the calculations, this is connected with the end of the world. We have given you the seven pairs. It's connected with the end of the world in Surah 15. The verse before that, before we have given you seven pairs, God says that God is the omniscient, who knows the creator of the omniscient, who knows everything and knows when the world will end. 
وإن الساعة لآتية فاصلح الصفحة الجميل إن ربك هو خلاك العلي that your Lord is the creator of the omniscient who knows when it will end we have given you seven pairs and the great Quran so all these signs together tell us that there is no doubt but it is a piece of information it is not required to go to heaven the minimum requirements are believe in God believe in the hereafter lead a righteous life under any name if you are a Buddhist or Hindu or Christian or Jewish or Muslim under any name, if you worship God alone, the creator of the universe, and believe in the hereafter, heaven and hell, resurrection after death, and lead a righteous life. You can't just believe in God and the hereafter and be a nasty, bad person, liar, cheat, and all that. You have to lead a righteous life. So these three minimum requirements will lead you to heaven. Belief in the messengers, Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, is not required. The angels is not required. Believing in the scriptures is not required. We don't see it in the... Believing that the, the world will end in 1710 or 2280 it is, not, it is not required. But it is a valuable piece of information, as valuable as knowing that there are angels and jinns and messengers and scriptures. Atim as-salat.